And, uh, I'm glad we brought our cheerleaders. So. <laughs> okay, so uh, well, well, welcome to our presentation. Uh, first, I'd just like to say thank you again to the, the guys from Plated. That was a really incredible presentation, seeing, seeing what you guys did there. It's really impressive. Now, now we have to try and follow that. Um, so our presentation, it's, uh, it's called Audio Under the Hood. We're going to try and take you under the hood a little bit of, um, our, of our development process, our, our engine, talk about how we uh, developed the audio for The Witcher. Obviously, it's a very big game, so we won't be able to go into um, full detail, perhaps, of, of everything, but there will be time, I hope, for questions at the end. So if you have something that we mention and you want to know more about it, then, then do take note. First off, I'd like to introduce uh, our team. We have uh, Krzysztof Lipka, who's our senior sound designer and sound team coordinator. So he has over six years experience in the industry as a sound designer. His uh, ship titles include Witcher 2, The Witcher 3, Dead Island, Riptide, This War of Mine, and many others. We have uh, Pavel Dautvoort, also our senior sound designer. So he's been senior sound designer with us for a number of years. He has over 15 years experience in the industry. Uh, and also has worked on Witcher 2, Witcher 3, and, and numerous other titles. And on the end here we have uh, Marcin, who is our music director <laughs> and composer. He has uh, 10 years of experience in the industry as a composer. Five years now at CD Projekt Red. Uh, again, he's uh, shipped The Witcher 3, including the expansions. Uh, Hard West, The Vanishing of Ethan Carter, among others. Uh, and my name is Colin Walder. I'm, uh, I'm the senior audio programmer at CD Projekt. Uh, I've been working in the industry as an audio programmer now for 10 years. Uh, and my ship titles include uh, the post-release content on The Witcher, uh, Grand Theft Auto V, <laughs> uh, Max Payne 3, and uh, Haze. And uh, if you remember that one, I apologize. <laughs> uh, so just to start us off, I'll talk a little bit about the, uh, the code perspective from the game, as it's something which touches uh, all of the areas. So I've been working at CD Projekt now for just over a year. I joined shortly after the uh, initial release of Witcher 3 uh, Wild Hunt. And so for the initial uh, development, or for the development of the main game, there were no dedicated audio programmers. Uh, CD project. So all of the sound uh, that was, was released with the base game was done with uh, uh, integration support from the engine team, from uh, the game team, a number of different uh, uh, coders providing support there. And so the focus of this code was to enable the sound designers as much as possible to implement their vision. It was all about giving tools uh, and uh, modes of implementation to the sound designers with a relatively light layer of, of code. And we uh, shipped the initial version of WISE on uh, version 2013.2.9. I apologize if my mic technique isn't, isn't very good. Uh, I'm not, not actually a, a singer by nature. So for the post-release content, which includes the episodes, uh, Blood and Wine, Hearts of Stone, as well as the, the DLC and the, the patches, we have uh, two uh, dedicated audio coders, myself and uh, one of the coders from the engine team who's 100% on, on audio. And this means that we were able to provide some more dedicated support from the sound designers. We didn't change anything radically. We, we weren't certainly ripping out systems uh, from, from the base game and, and trying to rewrite them. Instead, we were trying to uh, add in extra things. So as you'll see throughout the presentation, this meant that we could add some small extra details we could work rapidly with the sound designers to be able to uh, imp implement features that, that were going to be a help to them in, in custom situations, and as well as working on some slightly bigger uh, features and moving outside of maybe this, this direct paradigm of, of trying to do as much as possible in, in WISE. We were still doing obviously lots and lots uh, in WISE, but some things we were able to uh, add custom, custom support in, uh, in our engine. And we also shipped uh, all of the post-release content uh, on the same version of WISE. We did look at uh, upgrading to WISE version 2015. We had a few teething problems, and unfortunately, we didn't have uh, enough time and also uh, difficulties with the, the size of patches 
that it would have involved to, to rebuild, all, re rebuild all of the sound banks. Um, and so in the end, we, uh, we stuck with the, uh, the same version as the, the initial release. So I'm going to pass you over now to uh, Pavel, who's going to talk about the ambience.